Well, it's great to see so many people here. Um, my name is Gail Brown. I'm executive director of the Office of Arts and Culture for the City of Phoenix. Um, so welcome to today's announcement. We are partnering in this project with the Phoenix Public Library. So I want to thank uh, the, our library director, uh, Rita Hamilton, as well as Deputy Director Paula Portier, who's with us here today. I also want to thank uh, some people here at South Mountain Community Library and South Mountain Community College. Rob Barr, thank you so much for your help uh, in putting this event together. And Lydia Johnson also, we couldn't have done it without both of you. Also, a big thank you to uh, Sherry Olson, president of the South Mountain Community College, for making this such a lovely atmosphere for us today. So several months ago, we issued a call for a, public, uh, for a poet laureate for the city of Phoenix. Then we assembled a panel of poetry experts uh, to review the applications and make recommendations to Mayor Greg Stanton and Councilwoman Laura Pastor, who's chair of our Parks, Arts, Education, and Equality subcommittee. And some of the panelists who are part of that process are with us today, and I just wanted to thank them. Uh, our Arizona State Poet Laureate, Alberto Rios. Woo! You'll be hearing a little bit from him in a moment. Uh, also, uh, Jake Friedman. Jake, where are you? Sitting in the front row. The publisher of Fort Chambers Press, also with the ASU of Virginia uh, Piper Center for Creative Writing. Thanks for being here, both of you. Uh, and also, the chair of our um, Arts and Culture Commission, Taniqua Broughton, also sitting here in the front row. Others who helped us out with that panel process are Carol Hogan, who's the president of the Poetry Society for Arizona, as well as Kathleen Sullivan from the Phoenix Public Library, and Laura Tohey, who is the Poet Laureate for the Navajo Nation. It was a great, very esteemed panel of people involved in this process, and we're very grateful to him. So to get things started this morning, I would like to invite our, our mayor, Greg Stanton, to start us off this morning. Thank you, Gail. <laughs> Driving through gunfire, the risk of a wrought iron fence, an open canal that flows through the mouth of alfalfa near the ramshackle house. The boys keep vigil under the trees, screwing parliament filters into the clay that holds the neighborhood together. When I ask you to build me a city, you find yourself miles from Broadway lost under the arches of color and love, a bucket of symmetrical plastic pieces. Driving, I imagine you next to me, imagining nothing. My elbow chafed by the nearby despair, imagining worse things than this silence. That's pretty good stuff, isn't it? That's our poet laureate right there that I just read from. That's a poem called The Architecture of Despair. And we're here because we need more poetry in our lives and in our city. In these challenging times, times where there's so much trepidation about what's gonna happen in our city, in our state, in the future of our country, art and literature and poetry can bring people together in ways that politics can't right now. Uh, and so that is why we are here. That's why I am pleased to be here today at South Mountain College and Library with uh, my counsel and Laura Pastor, who I hope is on her way, but I know she's a huge supporter of this program and this school and our libraries. And with our friend, the great state poet laureate, Alberto uh, Rios, I love hearing him read poetry, so I wanted to imitate you with that, uh, starting out with some poetry reading. He's great at it. And standing next to Passages, a city-funded public art project with poetry curated by our friend Mr. Rios, to announce the inaugural Poet Laureate for our city, the city of Phoenix. Now, this is a first for Phoenix, and this is a new program in which we reinforced our, our city's support for arts and culture and our understanding of the vital role 
that arts play in the health and well-being of our communities. So on the advice of a panel of literary experts, and Alberto and I are wondering, who are these experts? <laughs> but they're experts. Assembled by the City of Phoenix Arts and uh, Culture, led by Gail Brown, and our Phoenix Public Library, and our Arts Commission, led by Tinkwa Brockwin, Councilman Pastor and I have selected Rosemarie Dombrowski, a poet who is also a teacher of writing literature at the ASU downtown campus, a small press publisher, and an organizer of downtown poetry readings as our City of Phoenix Poet Laureate. Let's give her a big round of applause. Congratulations. We're so proud of you. You're going to be awesome. That poem I read was just one of many in this book, The Book of Emergencies. Get a close-up of it. We want everyone to buy this book or go to the library and check it out. This is Rosemary's awesome book of, uh, of poetry. You'll hear why Rosemary was selected in just a moment. But why does Phoenix need a poet laureate? Of course, our city is overflowing with artistic talent and inspiration. Maybe some of the students here are current or aspiring uh, artists. I mentioned we need this art form now more than ever to speak to us in ways that maybe the body politic can't at this uh, point. News magazines and presses publishing the work of local writers are rapidly growing and thriving. We want to support the work of our local artists and writers and poets. Nearly every night of the week, some literary event is taking place at a Phoenix art gallery, cafe, bookstore, college campus, museum or theater. From poetry to fiction readings to spoken word and wonderful storytelling performances. Just this weekend, the city hosted the Breakbeat Poets, an intergenerational workshop and hip hop poetry reading that drew hundreds of people to Cesar Chavez Library and Park in West in Southwest Phoenix. With all of this profusion of talent, now is the time, the right time for us to name a writer who will inspire us, inspire our next generation, children in our schools today, but also has the ability to capture and evoke what makes our city so great, our community so unique and wonderfully diverse. And Rosemary Dombrowski is that writer. So I want to say as mayor of the city, representing 1.5 million people of the city who are going to get to know your name and your great work. <laughs> now moving forward, all the children that are going to get to see you come in and do poetry, you're going to inspire a generation of writers and readers and thinkers. No pressure, but you're going to get it done. So we are excited to see what you will accomplish in your two-year appointment that begins in January. And I want to thank all of you for being with us this morning for this exciting announcement a new day in the city of Phoenix as we celebrate our new poet laureate. And if Councilman Pastor, does she make it? On She's on her way, so she will speak as a leader and supporter of the arts uh, when she gets here. But it is my honor then to introduce, we got this idea from the state. The state was first. They did a poet laureate first. Uh, but it was such a great idea that we wanted to do it in the city of Phoenix uh, as well. And if you're not uh, familiar with his work, get to know him, a great artist and community leader who speaks to us in times where we need it, our friend, the State Poet Laureate, Alberto Rios. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Bienvenidos todos. Uh, this is a somber day for the nation, and for Arizona in particular, but we are gathered, nevertheless, on this extraordinarily happy occasion in the middle of the Sonoran Desert on a fine winter morning uh, so cold here in Arizona. <laughs> I love it. Uh, on behalf of the selection committee and in my very particular role as the state's poet laureate, I want to say congratulations to Rosemary Dombrowski, the inaugural City of Phoenix Poet Laureate. We won't be able to say that again. <laughs> this, this is a first and an only, so congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Dombrowski is the founder of Rinky Dink Press, is poetry editor at Four Chambers and the co-founder of the wonderful Phoenix Poetry Series, which is about to enter its 10th year. She's been nominated for several poetry-related awards, and her work has appeared in numerous publications. Her collections include The Book of Emergencies, which I think you were reading from, 
and a lyrical, which is a lyrical exploration of the culture of autism and the philosophy of unclean things, a celebration, a celebration of phobias, superstitions, and decay. Only a poet. In addition to being a lifetime literary arts activist, she is a senior lecturer at, of English on ASU's downtown Phoenix campus, where she has taught since the inauguration of that venue in the year 2006. She is the co-founder and editor of the undergraduate writing journal on campus, and she teaches courses on poetics, women's literature, and creative ethnography. In the preface to her collection of poems, The Book of Emergencies, Ms. Dombrowski says, there's something to be said for agonizing persistence, how it can resurrect things that are lost, transform the abject into something bearable, even beautiful. And so she has found exactly that, the beautiful, no matter what it looks like. This is what a great poet does. Cheers, Rosemary Dombrowski. You can tell I'm a perpetual educator because I always have coffee in my hand. Okay. <laughs> First, that was an overwhelmingly beautiful introduction by two amazing men who I respect greatly. So first, I'd like to thank the mayor, the Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture, for entrusting me with this position. And of course, it's a dream come true to be selected by a poet who the entire community regards as a mentor, our Poet Laureate of Arizona, Alberto Rios. I'd also like to send my gratitude and love out to my nominator, Kelsey Pinckney of Four Chambers Press, even though she's not here. And lastly, I want to thank all my creative writing students at ASU, from the old Merge Poetry Journal team to the new Rinky Dink Press team, my honor students, my poetry workshop students, and all the other talented young writers who have been my inspiration for over a decade. I wouldn't be the poet or the teacher that I am today without them. Though some people may not know what a poet laureate is, and that's true, this is the highest honor I could receive mostly because it means that the city's civic and artistic leaders have entrusted me with the task of evolving poetry in Phoenix, putting it back in the hands and ears and hearts of the people. I've spent my entire career working to grow the visibility, accessibility, and relevance of poetry. I spend every day educating the emerging poets at ASU's downtown Phoenix campus, attempting to meaningfully integrate poetry into their lives. And now, I'm ecstatic to take on this role as your community poet. People sometimes ask me, why poetry? And it's because I believe that poetry is the medium by which we can grow our strength. Poetry isn't merely a form that demands lyrical and linguistic skill, but one that's also known for its empathy and its sensitivity to human suffering, arguably making it the best vessel in which to share the stories we find most difficult stories about suffering, loss, and otherness, stories that lead to empowerment and healing. Thus, poetry is both the recognition of the human struggle and the celebration of the self in all its forms. I love this city so very much, and I hope that I can help us find our voices. I hope I can make poetry feel like home. I don't know if I'm technically closing the press conference anymore because I know the councilwoman has not spoken yet, but I was planning on closing with a poem. Uh, but if she's here, we can let her we can let her speak before yeah, yeah, I read no, the poem. The poem after that. Okay. I will read the poem at the very end right. then. Thank you again so much. <laughs> Thank you. Councilwoman Pastor, we'd love to have you say a few words. <laughs> Where are we in the poem at the end? Uh, yeah, she's been introduced, so whatever okay. you want to say. Sorry, <laughs> this is what happens when I get back to back, but uh, pleasure, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, as an educator, right here at South Mountain Community College, I started my career here when I moved back to Arizona, and uh, this is home for me. And I'm very proud to uh, be part of this, uh, uh, the Poet Laureate 
only because I understand the importance of liter literacy, but really language, cultures, and how it all intertwines in poetry. And one that uh, had struggled uh, with reading and uh, not understanding the importance of reading and being able then to be exposed to really good uh, poetry and be able to learn how to write and use my feelings and thoughts and languages within it uh, gave me that outlet to understand the importance of literacy and how it blended within my world. And so because of that, I really, uh, great people around me who had a passion for literacy uh, and language and literature were able then to expose me to the understanding of what it does. And so I'm glad that you were chosen. I'm also glad to see uh, one of my mentors, Alberto Rios. Uh, we, I go back to ASU and uh, during that time to be able to listen and understand how, how words come together and how they're crafted and impact uh, not only me, but also others around me. So thank you for, for doing that around the state. Uh, it's important, especially right now in the times that we're in. And so um, thank you. I appreciate that you're here and I appreciate that uh, you're supporting us. So thank you. So when Gail from the Office of Arts and Culture told me about this last week, she said, we want to keep it under wraps. We want the announcement to be next Wednesday. And I immediately texted like five of my former students. I just needed to say that. Uh, so they're the only people that knew in advance, and I swore them to secrecy, but we know that students lie, so I can't promise you that other people don't know. Um, I'm going to close the press conference with a poem that deals with the loss of cognitive and physical abilities and the things that we turn to in the wake of those losses. It's entitled E equals MC squared. I've forgotten how to spread honey on toast, how to finagle the medium-sized bowls into the racks. I haven't combed my hair in days. I can't remember if permanent means indelible or its opposite. I'm beginning to understand the last days of Hemingway. The porch is covered in yellowing weeds and dried feathers. I grab an apple from the bag of pink ladies and realize there's mold on the stem, that everything's approaching its expiration. I tell you not to visit me in the hospital. In desperation, I ride a dinosaur on the playground. I dream of roasting marshmallows around the flame of a gas burner. In the car, I hold a painting of a hummingbird on my lap. I'm wearing a phoenix around my neck because I want to believe in resurrection. As the car accelerates, we talk about the meaning of E equals MC squared. We decide that too much knowledge is sometimes too much, but we know there's no going back. Thank you again, everyone. I'm so honored to be in this role, and I hope that I do right by the city of Phoenix and everyone who's interested and disinterested in poetry. We're going to change them. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly right. We're going to do some photos in just a second. I just wanted to thank you all again for coming out and being a part of this truly important moment for the city of Phoenix. It's a great day, uh, and I see great things ahead for us in terms of poetry and literature. Look to our website, phoenix.gov arts. We're going to have a page for the Poet Laureate. It's a, the best place to go to understand what she's up to and what kind of projects that we'll be working on in the future. Uh, and I think we have some time to stick around for a bit after we do some photos uh, before we whisk her off to some interviews if you want to talk to her more about, about her project. Thanks again.